Everything you think you know about what women want in the bedroom is probably wrong. In this video, I'm going to be debunking some myths about what women actually crave in the bedroom. First off, it's not about your size, the technique, and the process. It's about your ability to establish that emotional connection. A woman doesn't want to feel like her body is just a vessel that you use for your own pleasure and then after you're done you just feel all right and she's just there like container you know now <laughs> she no one feel like she be container something maybe just used to away she wants to feel emotionally connected to you your ability to make her feel seen and understood by you is all that matters it's not about your size see your thing feel be like this but your woman no going to carry you play at all. You know why? Because you sabi do the do. Not be all about the jim jim jim. You sabi go 10 rounds, 15 rounds. It's about your ability to establish emotional connection. Make her feel like say she did special. Make her feel like say you did see her. Let her understand that you, she matters in your life. Establish that emotional connection. And if you're wondering how you can achieve this, check the description box for a link to the video that I made that would like give you details on how you can establish emotional connection with your woman. And your activities in the other room will just become, you know, ziridi wedede. <laughs> Secondly, never compare your sex life with what you see in porn. You see that porn, eh? <laughs> it's a different thing altogether. It is not even close to what is obtainable in real life. For those of us who were married and seen this, I'm sure you understand what I mean. Even though some of us still make the mistake of comparing these two worlds. I call them two worlds because they are not the same. Don't compare what you see in porn with real life. It's, it'll not be the same. <laughs> They're not even close. Because at the end of the day, you're going to just burn yourself out. Give yourself unnecessary anxiety. Because you follow what they do there and you do the same thing to your woman and you expect the same results. Porn is different from what is obtainable in real life. So just take that out of your head entirely from your thinking. It's just like seeing a science fiction movie, all right? And you know how sometimes you paint this picture of uh, the world is coming to an end. There's many only two people, or maybe there's many only ten people. And these ten people are supposed to save the other race from, you know how their stories are. And they go, shall they tell you one story, one story? You see, when you finish watching all those movies, yeah, you come back to reality, <laughs> smell the coffee, and then feel the breeze around you. Know that you are alive, and this is reality, not what you just saw in that science fiction movie. Sometimes these stories just, you know, make you think and make you become imaginative, which is very good, all right? But it is not reality. That is why they call it fiction, okay? So it's the same thing as watching porn and comparing it with what is obtainable in your own personal life. No, you know they work. Like I said, it will make you have unnecessary anxiety, premature ejaculation, and even erectile dysfunction. Because now you keep putting up, you overthinking one key because you just say you watch one guy, where they do now like a horse, they do like a horse, they do 11 hours, <laughs> or they do 10 hours. You can't come the things that you go do like that for real life. Ah, my brother, I don't tell you. Wake up and smell the coffee. It is not real. Number three, not taking care of your body. Okay, you don't have to have six packs or 10 packs or whatever it is they have, but taking care of your body like not eating junk food, taking care of your health, minding what you eat is important. In fact, if your woman they see yourself, she will feel happy because you're taking care of yourself. You're going to look good when you take care of yourself because a lot of how you look on the outside is actually determined by what you eat, what you eat into your body and how you think, all right? How you think determine how your disposition is and then how you look most times a lot of it depends on what you eat so eat right don't stuff yourself up with junk food not eating healthy and you know some we just be doing some combination that is not healthy i know the funny thing is that some of these junk food they're not even cheap especially in nigeria where i live some of these junk food where they see not cost past anything so like i said it's not about having a model look or whatever but just eating healthy mind what you eat and please for the love of god my african brothers especially my nigerian brothers eh what's belly no be sign of riches and prosperity 
<laughs> what we're going up those is when you see a man that has pot belly automatically people just think that he's a big man ah, the guy is balling he has money not be all the time or sometimes when person get pot belly like that it don't be like say it can't see be now it's not always a sign of good health it's not always a sign of wealth and prosperity take care of yourself okay if you know you like to drink for some of our brothers that like to drink a lot like if you just drink one crate <laughs> You will make your belly big now. Nah. If you they drink, oh, but if you minimize them, you know, just turn it down a little bit, brother. Turn it down so that your belly no go be too big because it's not a sign of good health. If you're standing up straight as a man and you know they see your pee pee above your stomach, it means a problem. Then that means your stomach don't cover everything. Exercise, burn that excess fat. And you know one thing with exercise is that exercise is very good. It helps you, you know, regulate the heart rate and everything, but if you exercise every day and still eat junk food every day, then it's like counterproductive. If they do this one, but this one will cover this one. You get what I mean? So just watch what you eat and basically just take care of yourself. I think that's what I'm trying to say since. Take good care of yourself. Your yeah, pot belly will be always a sign of prosperity and wealth. <laughs> And in relation to what I'm actually speaking about, most women would appreciate you when you take care of your body. And when I'm talking about taking care of your body, I mean like all around, smell good. Yes, now, a little bit of roll-on, you know, small perfume, psh, 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 you know. If not spray you like anyone, but not too much, but just look, smell fresh, look good. Take care of your physical appearance. It helps in the bedroom. Use some deodorant. For some people, they don't like all this external smell. But just make sure you wash up well and use maybe antiseptic soaps. They help a lot. They help to keep you not smelling so bad. Right? This is something that your woman is going to thank you for. She might not ask you for it. But she appreciates it when you do these things. Number four, alcohol may boost your confidence. But in the long run, it will hamper your performance. All right? You know how you want the ginger now? Nah? You don't booze and you know your confidence is 10 over 10. If you talk to anybody, they do things, maybe say, you know, they feed you on a normal day. But then, what about the actual performance and the things you're supposed to do in the bedroom? It's going to affect that area because always remember that the golden rule to having a great sex is what? Communication, foreplay, and honesty. These three things, they are very powerful. Communication, when you're doing the do with your partner, ask questions, communicate with her, speak with her. You might be surprised the things that she will reveal to you. Foreplay, in fact, I can't even emphasize that enough. Foreplay is very, very powerful, both mental foreplay and physical foreplay. And then honesty. Be vulnerable, be honest to each other. If there's something that you're not comfortable with or maybe there's something that you don't, just, you know, just speak it out. Be honest with each other. These are the golden rules to having great sex. And then number five, this one is something that a lot of people are guilty of. Some people tend to Try and establish emotional connection only when they are trying to have sex with their wife. And it's not, it's not a good thing all the time because a woman always wants to be emotionally connected with you, especially your wife, whether you're having sex or not. Because that is how we are. We thrive on emotional connection. If you see a woman that is emotionally connected with her husband, it's, she's going to be happy. You can spot her from a mile away. Because you know why? Every day she feels seen, she feels understood, she feels heard. These things just has a way of working on us. I mean, you, we might not say anything, but from the way she's glowing and from the way she's happy and responding to everything around her, you can tell that that right there is a happily married woman. So emotional connection is important at all times. Not necessarily only when you want to do the other room activity. <laughs> you know, it's important. Just try and connect with your woman at all times. And it's very simple. You can communicate with her. Communicate with her even when she's not there. Send a text, send a little love note, you know. Tell her she's beautiful every now and then. Some people are saying, yeah, you don't need to tell your woman she's beautiful every day. Now she know that one now. Or you don't need to tell her that you love her. She know that one now. You've forgotten that to some women, their primary love language are words of affirmation. If, for example, you're married to a woman whose primary love language are words of affirmation, and then you withhold this, thinking that, hey, I don't have to be telling her every day. I don't have to be doing this every day. And saying that to yourself. Now you're going to hamper the success of that relationship. See, 
it doesn't matter whether you have 10 children or you have 13 children. The fact that it looks like on the outside, it looks like you're progressing doesn't always, always necessarily mean that you're progressing holistically. Okay. What I like to call a progressive relationship is a situation where the woman is happy, the man is happy, the children are happy. And it doesn't have to be maybe when you have money or not. So you have to put all of these things into consideration. That is why it's important to know your spouse. Know them very well. Know your woman. Understand her primary love language. And no matter how introverted you are, by God, please, if her primary love language are words of affirmation, then you have to say these words to her. Because she thrive on them. Listening to you saying this and hearing you saying this, even if it's not every day, it's going to help boost her confidence, boost her self-esteem. You have no idea what your words can do to a woman, whether positively or negatively. A woman that thrives on words of affirmation also will fall at degrading words because she likes to hear words from you. And then if those words are not good words, if they are bad words, maybe you're the type that puts her down with your words, tell her negative things, just insult her, insult her body and all of that. She will fall at that too. She begins to feel less secure about herself. She will feel less confident. She will lose her self-esteem and she will not be happy in the long run. Words of affirmation, they are powerful. All right, this is where I'll stop with the debunking. <laughs> if you have other things you feel are meat as well and they are lies and shouldn't be believed, of course, by all means, drop them in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.